I'd like you to take your seat, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the month of maintaining your spiritual height. Hallelujah. Please usher us, everybody, be settled. Maintaining your spiritual height. Praise the Lord. And um, slash thanksgiving. Okay? Maintaining your spiritual height. Slash thanksgiving. Can we enter into the God's word right now? Okay, first of all, um, to lay foundation, I would like you to know that God has a vision. God is a visionary God. Now, God doesn't do anything without looking at the future. Everything God does in the now is provoked by the tomorrow that God sees. So, God looks at the future to do things today. And that's what makes him God. No man men look at today to do things. Some people look at their past to do things. But God in his wisdom and intelligence doesn't look at the past to do things. Doesn't look at the now to do things. He looks at the future to do things. Now, having considered the tomorrow, and when God looks at tomorrow, he saw me and you. That's awesome. Having considered tomorrow, he did something. He gave man salvation. And the goal behind salvation, somebody watch it, is to bring men to a height that their own ability cannot take them to. God's vision was to cause men to rise up. Cause men to change heights. And you know when God was looking at that vision he saw us. Had it been that salvation did not come we would have been low. Sin made us low. In our time we got a lower mark. A lower level. We got a minus. Remember God said to Adam Any that thou shalt eat of this fruit tree thou shalt die. And that death simply means that Adam left the realm that God put him into. Everybody watch me. The realm of Adam before he failed was a realm that made him higher than everything that God created. There was nothing that God created that was not under the authority of Adam. Adam was in charge. Adam had food enough to eat. Adam doesn't know sickness. Adam had immunity from God. Adam was the governor of Eden. At Adam's word everything bows that was the reign adam was before he failed so when adam failed he failed out of dominion he failed out of authority he failed out of power he got himself reduced there was a height he was but when he when 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 he committed sin he dropped from that height so god now decided to see a future of him restoring man to the height where he was before he failed so for God to be able to do that God decided to release a plan called salvation salvation was a plan of God in making man to come up to height that God who is high came to men who are low so that those who are low will go high that's good news can I tell you until you understand these things these realities your Christian experience will not be complete what is it that completes your Christian experience? It is Christian discoveries. The more you discover scriptural truths and you're able to flow with them, it completes your Christian experience. This is a spiritual reality. You must be able to fiddle with it, understand it, and run your life with it. The goal behind salvation is that God who is high came down low so that man who is low can go up high. That was why Jesus came. You need to understand now that he has come, I am lifted. Now that he has come, I am exalted. Now that he has come, he took my place so that I can enjoy his level. You need to understand it and run your life with it. When it becomes a revelation, it becomes a guide to your step. It becomes a revelation, it becomes an anchor to your spirit. You will not be able to be afraid anymore. When they say there's a casting down, you can rise up and tell them there's a lifting from me. Why? Because he came down for me to rise up. If he came down for me to rise up, ladies and gentlemen, in him I am risen. In him I am lifted. And if I'm lifted in him, it means I'm lifted above poverty. I'm lifted above pain. I'm lifted above, above what limits other people. 
darkness may cover the earth, gross darkness of people, but the light and the glory of God shall be found in me. Child of God, hear me and hear me well. This is our revelation. He came down low for us who are low to go up high. Am I talking to anybody? If I'm talking to you, let it be visible in your attitude. Somebody will go up and remain high. If I'm you, my image shall be like a thunder. Somebody scream that amen and connect yourself to power. So anytime you say, Lord, I want to have a complete Christian experience, God will tell you, well, go back to the word of God. Go back to the book of Revelation. The things you can see and understand. That is the thing that can make you outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that God deals with us based on our personal revelation per time. What you know about God per time, that's what God uses in dealing with you. Bible said, for my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. A child of God that lacks knowledge shall be destroyed. But a child of God that is filled with knowledge shall triumph i don't know what has come against you but i prophesy by the knowledge of god's word may you transfer triumph may you overcome may you step out of it may you conquer and what is the knowledge tonight or this morning i'm here to tell somebody in the name of jesus that he came down low for you to go up high i prophesy in the name of jesus may you experience a higher level above poverty higher level above sickness higher level above destruction whatever hinders other people shall never, 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 never hinder you. Lift your two hands above your head and shout at amen and establish your course. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 12 no, verse number 14 for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself partook in the same that through death he might destroy he that has the power of death that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage so there is a people who are subjected to bondage are we together oh answer me there is a people who are subject to bondage. They were bound. Bound by fear, by doubt, by evil thoughts, by curses. The Bible says that he decided to do one thing. Are we together? He took part in our nature so that he can fight the battle we cannot fight with this nature and gain victory for us and set us free from the limitations of that nature and by setting us free took us up into his own reign. This is our spiritual reality. He shared in our humanity. He shared in our humanity. I like you to catch this revelation. Now, do you know the truth? He shared in our humanity to feel what it means to be a human being. So that we can share in his divinity to feel what it takes to be a God in a man. He didn't catch it. He shared in our humanity to feel what it means to be sick. So that we can share in his divinity to feel what it means to feel like living on earth sickness free he shared in our humanity to feel what it means to be hungry so that we can share in his divinity feeling what it means to have abundance and eating always and there shall be no day without food he shared in our humanity somebody lift your hand and say he shared in my humanity Am I talking to anybody in this house? Do it as if you know what you're doing. He's shared in my humanity. Say it as if you know those outside, those inside. Say it. He's shared in my humanity. So that I can share in his divinity. He's shared to feel me. I share in his ability, in his divinity, to feel what it means to be a God living in the body. Him, a God, lives in the body. We, body, lives in him. 
Is it not? That's what the Bible says. He came to share in our humanity. He, God, took up flesh so that we flesh can take up God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's scripture. That's revelation. You need to understand it. He came down to share in our humanity so that we can go and experience what it means to live on earth or function as a God. Normally men are limited. Men are created in the world of impossibles. But hear me now, because we are human beings sharing his nature. Bible called us, Bible said we are partakers of his own divine nature. We are partakers. We are partakers of his own divine nature. So we partook in his nature, even as men. So that we can feel what it takes to be a man functioning as a God. Just as himself who took up flesh as a God to feel what it takes to be a God in a man feeling sick feeling weak feeling broke so that he can feel what you feel and fight what fights you and settle you forever they hated him so he can feel what it means that you do good to people and they hate you they killed him so that he can feel what it means that you didn't do anything but man wants to kill you not because they saw you buy a new car they want to terminate your life they saw you and your wife standing, they want to go against you the devil is a liar anyone that wants to do that cannot succeed why because he felt it to help me so that i can feel him and be settled in life i pray for somebody today may you experience settlement that image will roll like a thunder Am I talking to anybody here? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who had made us partakers of inheritance of the saints in the light. Who had delivered us from the kingdom of, of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins can i tell you when sin was forgiven death was cancelled because the wages of sin is death and before he could forgive sin and 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 cancel death what did he do giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of a sense he gave us an inheritance he gave us portions that we are not qualified for he gave us portions that our ability can't give to us. I'm not talking to anybody. He gave us things that even if we are to walk eternally, we cannot achieve them. Even if we cut our blood, we cannot achieve them. Because what, the, the, the hold of sin cannot be, cannot be satisfied. God cannot be satisfied by a man. There is nothing a man can do that can justify, that can justify that man or can, that can satisfy God, the, the righteous requirement of God. Only him could settle God's righteous demands. Only him. And when he satisfied it, Bible said he gave us, he qualified us to become partakers of inheritance that we cannot afford. Somebody hear me? The inheritance you cannot afford that is available for you. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are brought into a realm where you can inherit health, you can inherit favor, you can inherit goodness, you can inherit power, you can inherit advancement, you can inherit upward movement. Not based on what you've done. Child of God, hear me? If God is waiting for you to do things before you help you, even if you do it in like a million years, you can't secure the help of God. Shocking deep, I come to find out that God by himself did for himself what we cannot do for him so that we can step in into the things that he has in stock for us how many of you know that eternally god has stocks for you god has things for you eyes have not seen he does not enter into the house of man what else should i have in stock for you you've seen 2020 but hear me there is something coming in 2021 eyes have not seen it it's a beautiful day ahead of you 2030 is coming 2025 is coming and you're going to be alive and healthy to step in into portions that god has kept for you qualified us 
Anytime the devil tells you you are not qualified, look at that devil. I brought to Bible and tell him, you can't stop me. Marry now. You can't stop me. Having my husband, you can't stop me. Having my children. Because God has qualified me. I may not be qualified by man, but there's a divine qualification. I am qualified. Not than the account of my merit. Grace qualified me. He qualified me and made me a partaker of the inheritance is a cure for those in light. There's an inheritance for you. Oh, I'm not feeling you, amen. Lift your hand and say, I have an inheritance. My life cannot be empty. I can never run empty. He said to Israel, and I will show these people favor that when they go, they shall not go empty handed. But the mystery of inheritance, you're not meant to pass through this earth empty handed. And I prophesy that between now and 31st of this month, whatever belongs to you shall locate you by force. As you enter 2021, whatever belongs to you shall answer to you by force. Nothing shall miss you. You will not miss your portion. Portions will come your way. Lift up your hand and shout a good amen and establish a cause. Shagabadabash. He qualified us to share in the inheritance of his sins. And number two, the Bible said, He delivered us from the powers of darkness. Kalabadagash. Each time I read, look at that scripture, I, 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 I cannot but begin to give thanks. I am delivered from the powers of darkness. Darkness can't hinder me anymore. Darkness can't stop me anymore. Let all the demons in Accra come together. One light in me will send them back to her. Let all the demons in your father's house come against you. One revelation drop from God's word will put them behind you. I don't know who I'm talking to in this house. Bible said he delivered you from the powers of darkness. Is there any power of darkness fighting you, limiting you, or, or obstructing your way? Child of God, this is good news. This is a reality you must accomplish. This is a reality you must welcome and acknowledge. He and the Bible said, He delivered you. He delivered you. He fought the devil and bring you out. Where you are now, the devil can't touch you anymore. I don't know who is saying you will remain like this. But I laugh at that person saying, He has delivered you. And whosoever the Son of Man sets free, He is free indeed. If God has delivered you, Satan cannot bind you anymore. If God has delivered you, Satan can't hinder you anymore. I don't know who I'm talking to in this house. Lift your voice and shout. I am delivered and the devil can do nothing about it anymore see see as I'm teaching and preaching you can be receiving it or you can be here and you're not giving attention and you're not receiving anything it is what you receive that releases you you can be here I'm teaching you are sleeping that's your business I won't say the word is not strong. I will say your mind is weak. Because if they play Shatawale now, you dance. You don't know that one word can fight 20 years battle. Somebody say, I receive my word. Somebody in a few minutes just lift your hand and speak in tongues for a while. He delivered me from the powers of darkness. From poverty, from limitations, from obstacles, from pains. He delivered me. Say it as if you know what you're saying. From every hand of the devil. Those outside open your mouth. He delivered me. I am delivered indeed. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, take your seat. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 3. Okay, verse number 5. Bible said, Even when we were dead in sin, had he quickened us together with Christ, by grace we are saved, and had raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. Now, look at that this. Bible said, what we read before, that he has delivered us from the powers of darkness and has translated us that translation was translation onto higher heights the kingdom of darkness is low god and his kingdom is high 
Bible said he delivered us and translated us. Thank God that he didn't deliver us to dump us. He delivered and translated. That translation was movement upward. I told you what you don't celebrate will not release celebration upon you. Delivered us, translated. So he delivered us from a lower kingdom and translated us to a higher one. I belong to the higher kingdom. The lower kingdom can do nothing about it. I belong to the head. The tail can't touch me. I belong to light. Darkness cannot hinder me. Somebody give the Lord a shout of amen. And in the kingdom of light, that's where health is. So I belong to health. I belong to prosperity. I belong to enlargement. I belong to increase. I belong to power. I can't be powerless. I belong to vision. My eye cannot be blind. I belong to provision. I can never see lack. There cannot be scarcity. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do as he has commanded you this day, it shall come to pass that the Lord your God shall set you up on high. And what has God commanded us? To confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and to believe in our heart that he died for us. If that shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do. What are we observing to do? To confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in our heart that he died and resurrected for my sake. The Bible said, then God shall lift us up above all the nations of the earth. So to everyone who has confessed it, there is a spiritual catapulting to the high place. Those that I'm talking to, you are receiving it now. And as you receive it, may you experience it. Now, Ephesians, now put it this way. Even when we are dead in sin, and we are down, because sin brought low. Sin makes low. All men have sinned and come short. Sin shortens your glory. Even when we are dead in sin, had he quickened us together with Christ, by his grace we are saved. Verse 6 now said, and as raised us up together and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so he delivered us translated us and lifted us this is our spiritual reality what is the blessing to this number one we are raised to live in his presence so we are no more amongst them asking God for his presence we live in his presence I live in him. He lives in me. Bible said he has made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. So we live in the company of God. Bible said he has come unto Mount Zion, the city of a living God, with the innumerable company of angels. You've come to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the city of God. Can I talk to you? You are no more. You are no more the one that locates God's presence. You are the one God's presence has located and God's presence dwells with you. Anywhere you found yourself, carry this revelation. I live in the midst of God. God is with me. God is around me. I can't walk away from God. The more I'm walking, God is walking. The more I'm standing, God is standing. The more I sit, God sits. Wherever I am, He is. Catch it. At the air, pilot says, Well, I can't, I don't know what's happening. Tell the pilot. He is here with me. They come against you to eat of your flesh. Say to him, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, when they shall come against me to eat of my flesh, they shall surely fall and crash and break their bones. They will never rise again. Why? He that is with me who pushed them down is with you. Having been lifted, you are lifted into his presence. Now, enough of coming to church and you're saying, Father, we have come to your presence. His presence doesn't leave you. In as much as the Holy Ghost is with you, his presence is always there with you. The Bible said, and I will give you the spirit that shall be with you forever. The Holy Ghost in the now is God the Father, God the Son put together. He is with you forever it he's not with you only when you're in church 
He's not with you only when you're fasting and praying. He's with you 247. Carry that mentality. He doesn't leave your Bible said, He that keeps you does not sleep nor slumber. Even when you're sleeping, He doesn't sleep. He watches you 24. He's right there. The psalmist understood this. He said, Even though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I fear no evil. Why? I am conscious of He that is with me. Somebody watch it. One of the things the devil wants to do is to make you lose consciousness of he that is with you. If you lose consciousness of he that is with you, he that is against you will finish you. And if you don't want he that is against you to finish you, become so conscious of he that is with you. That's number one thing. He lifted us into his presence. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Thou shalt show me the path of life, for in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, bless us forevermore. So because he's with me, joy shall be consistent. Because he's with me, gladness. Because he's with me, him around me will always do things that will command joy out of joylessness. When you are in need, he will supply. When you are at the back side, he will bring you to the front side. When enemies are against you, he will fight and finish them and settle you. When every man says there's a casting down, he will arise and say there's a lifting up for you. He will always do things that will sponsor joy. In his presence is fullness of joy. I like you to understand. If you can understand this from today, you find out that there is nothing that comes to steal your joy that God will allow him to fulfill his assignment. When it comes to steal your joy, because you live in his presence, his presence fights that force and bring you testimony so that your joy shall be sustained. If you catch it, poverty will leave you forever. Lack will leave you forever. Sickness will leave you forever. Can I shock you? Whatsoever the devil sponsors cannot survive in his presence. Uh, but whatever that is of God survives in his presence there was man in the Old Testament the Bible said that the man that was kept in the ark doesn't bring out maggot but man that was outside 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 of a of a of a of a of a of a of the ark of covenant breeds maggot which means out of his presence is challenge with him with you it's unusual safety. That doesn't mean trouble won't come. He was in the boat. Storm came. But because he was in the boat, he calmed the storm. He was in the boat. He was with Shadrach, Mystic, and the Badnego. They entered into fire. But because he was with them, fire refused to devour. He was with Daniel. And he entered into the lions then. But because he was with Daniel, lions could not eat him. I don't know what comes against you. But I want you to know that with consciousness of him being with you, consciousness of you living in his presence will make it impossible. Your womb will carry children. Abortion will not come in. You won't terminate your young. Nothing will come against you. Even if it comes against you, it will end up becoming a force of testimony. Scream and remain like a thunder and establish a cross. Am I talking to anybody? That's number one. Number two. Number two. He defeated the devil to be lifted. We too are giving access to the same victory. He lifted us to settle us in victory. He lifted us to bring us into the victory. He accomplished. Thanks be to God who always caused us to triumph. So that lifting for you is exaltation into the victory that he accomplished when he fought. How many of you know that he fought the devil and disarmed him and won over him to take you into what he won for you. So what it means, you're not, you're not fighting to win anymore. You're only fighting to protect the victory God gave you. I'll put it this way. Don't ever think you are the poor believing God for the blessing. You are the blessed of God believing God to defend your blessing. Don't ever think you are the cursed 
believing God for deliverance. You are he that has been delivered. Your assignment now is to defend your deliverance. You're not the one looking for faith. You are the one God has given faith in a measure with the responsibility of defending your faith and maintaining it. Lifting you is bringing you into victory. I put it this way. Isaiah chapter chapter 43 Bible said Fear not for I have redeemed thee. Somebody look at that, that sentence. Somebody watch, watch me now. Somebody say fear not. Somebody say fear not. Now God just said look at, look at me. Fear not for I have redeemed you. That's past tense. You know, said, when you pass through the fire, it shall not burn you. Which means, because I've redeemed you, fire will come. You will pass through it, but fire will not harm you. What does that mean? Victory was in place before trouble came. Anytime trouble comes, look at trouble and say, you came late. You came very late because victory was already given to me before trouble comes whenever darkness comes against you tell darkness you are late because light came before darkness how many of you know that god is light himself so when darkness come came against god god didn't worry at all because darkness coming against light is just wasting his time light will release and darkness will disappear victory has been given to you before the trouble came Anytime trouble comes, understand this everybody. The assignment of the devil is to twist your mind. But refuse that your mind must not be twisted. Anytime trouble comes, rise up and tell yourself, this one has come. Hey, God was with me before it came. I have victory in Christ before it came. And by the victory God has given me in God, in Christ before this trouble comes, this trouble shall also come and pass. Have you not seen scripture that consistently say, and it came to pass. Everything that comes against you is coming to pass. It's not coming to stay at all. Are you with me? It's not coming to stay. It's coming to pass. Am I talking to anybody? It is coming to pass. Lift your hand and say it's coming to pass. Say it again, it's coming to pass. What is coming against me? It's coming. And it's passing. In as much as God did not support it, Bible said, surely they shall gather against you, but for your sake they shall fall. I don't know who I'm talking to in this house. If it is you, shout on the men like a thunder. For whatsoever that is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh even our faith. Number three, we are raised above principalities and powers. We are raised above. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. Eyes, the eyes of your understanding shall be enlightened that you may know that, that you may know what is the hope of your calling. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense? Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power? Verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above principalities, powers, might, dominion. And every name that is named not only on this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and has given him to be the head over all things to the church which is the body the fullness of him that filled all things child of god this is your reality when he lifted him he lifted us and how far did he lift us bible said he lifted us far above principalities so if principalities are the ones sponsoring your, your your misgivings you are lifted above it catch the revelation oh, revelation will make you see things the way god sees it before you experience it as god wants you to experience it what you can't see is what you cannot experience revelation will cause you to see things the way god has made them to be you are lifted above principalities above powers
Does that look like you? Now, can I ask you, what is the greatest challenge of your now? Look at that challenge and tell that challenge, I am lifted above you. What is the greatest challenge of your now? What is the greatest enemy you're fighting with? Tell that enemy I'm lifted. Far above. Is it poverty? You are lifted. Is it sickness? You are lifted. Is it barrenness? You are lifted. Is it lack? I don't know who I'm talking to. Is it satanic advancement? Is it barriers? You try and try and try. It's not working. Hey me now. After this message, it shall begin to work. The revelation I am lifted above it. Is it is it doctor's report? Announce to yourself, I am lifted above it. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If it can become your thought, it can become your spirit. I am lifted. I'm not hearing you say it. I'm lifted above poverty, above witches, above wizards, above lack, above absence of money. Above absence of power to make money. I am lifted above. Above laziness. Above procrastination. Above sin. Above deadly habits. Above evil thoughts. I am lifted above. If you start thinking like this. Demons will leave you. I shared this met some time ago with somebody that has high blood pressure which has migrated into diabetes i shared it i shared with every amount of 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 intensity of commitment the man was looking at me i prayed for him he left three days later he called me he said you know i didn't want to tell you the first day second day because as i got back home i kept on meditating upon it Suddenly, all my symptoms changed. Said suddenly, all his symptoms changed. We win mentally first before we win physically. Catch it. We win spiritually first before we win naturally. And how do we win mentally or spiritually? We win when we discover truths. Truth is our winning power. Are you with me? Are you with me? We've been lifted. Say, I hear. Shout it again, I hear. Say, I've been lifted. How do I sustain myself at the lifted position? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. That verse of scripture in, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, giving thanks to the Father which has made us partakers of the of inheritance of the saints. So because he made us a partaker of that which belongs to the saints. The saints are giving the kingdom of their Father. The saints are giving liftings. So because he made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints of God we must live in thanksgiving. So I thank God not looking at just what God has done. I thank God also looking at what God has said. A lot of people can't thank God because they are looking at the things God has done and the things God has not done. That shouldn't be the reason for to thank God. Because whatever God has done cannot be compared to what he will do. Whatever the devil has done cannot be compared to what God will do. So if you are looking at the doings, it will limit you. Doings is for kids. But, do, but finding what God says and allowing the revelation of God's word provoking thanksgiving, that is more spiritual giving thanks to the father which has qualified so he was thanking god because of the spiritual revelation he got i'm qualified because i'm qualified he began to give thanks and the man that gives thanks based on the insight of god's word will end up stepping into what they have seen in god's word he was stepping into it as an experience Barrenness is killing you. You saw where the Bible said, children are the, are the heritage of the Lord. And you hold on to it. Children are the heritage of the Lord. And you start thanking God based on what God's word says. You are stepping into it. You are in lack. And you saw where the Bible said, I will supply all your needs. According to Mary's and glory by Christ Jesus. And we give thanks to it. Child of God, anytime you discover what God says concerning you, switch into thanksgiving. Consistency of thanksgiving is sponsored by consistency of revelation the more you catch revelations woo, it will sponsor thanksgiving 
You want to thank God always? See what God says. Hear what God says. Receive what God's word says. And can I shock you? You are lifted to start thanking him based on the possibilities that are where he has lifted you into. Your thanksgiving should be based on the possibilities that are bound where he has lifted you to. Hey, hey, hey. He has lifted you into where there is abundance of resources. Start thanking him. He has lifted you into where there is absence of sickness. Start thanking him. He has lifted you into where whatever you do shall prosper. Let your thanksgiving be sponsored by the revelation of his word. Are you with me? Are you with me? So don't just look around and see what God has not done. And see what God has done. But look around and see what God's word says. And allow it become too real to provoke thanksgiving. Do you know that when you see what God has said and you believe it and you begin to give thanks to it, heaven will say that is the man that is qualified. That is the man. That's that said rock music in the bad negro. King, we have no need to answer you. Our God are the devil. Do you know that's thanksgiving? They've not entered into the fire, but they are convinced our God are deliverers. The revelation of God's deliverance sponsored the bold speaking of giving thanks even before the king. And that is what stepped them into the experience of fire not hurting them. You want fire not to hurt you? Catch the revelation first and begin to give thanks. Wake him up. It's gone very far. Very, very far. I just love you to wake him. Because you may not know when your word is about to come. And that will be a, a you know, you can be here and not receive. Because you're not receiving. But you can also be here and receive too much. Because you're receiving too much. Receive grace. What, what does it mean to give thanks? Number one, it means to show gratitude. Write it down. Give thanks simply means to show gratitude. To show God that you are grateful. Thanksgiving is gratitude showed unto God. A heartly show to God that reveals appreciation to God for all the things God has done for you. So we've come to thank God. Simply means we've come to show God gratitude. We've come to show, tell God we are grateful over all the things He's done for us. Psalms 34 and verse 1. Bible said, And I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord. And he had me and he delivered me from all my fears they looked up to him and they were lighted and their faces were not ashamed the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of his trouble because of these things i will bless the lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth it is it is an opportunity to show god how grateful you are looking at the things god has done for you is anybody in this house that can testify God has done me good? Thanksgiving is a visible way of telling God, I thank you. I appreciate. I am grateful for what you've done for me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears they looked up to him and they were lighted and their faces were not ashamed the poor man cried and the lord heard and saved him out of all his trouble because of that i will bless the lord at all times and his praise shall continually be with me oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together does that make sense 
Genesis chapter 29 and verse 30 35. Bible said, And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now I will praise the Lord. For therefore he called the name Judah and left bearing. See, she conceived again. So why did she say I'll praise God? Because she conceived again. She has conceived before and she conceived again. So looking at the things God has done, you'll be able to give him thanks. It is a show of gratitude. Do not those who cannot remember things God has done cannot appreciate him. Have you not wondered that there are people that the only thing they remember are the things the devil did? They forgot that no matter what the devil did, God gave you life, God gave you health. God is the one who has put food on your table. God is the one who has put clothes on your body. Do you know there are people who are naked, they don't even have anything, they don't have a house. But you look at you. So don't always look at what the devil has done, also look at the things God has done. Far more than the things the devil is doing, God is doing too much. If you can consider the too much God is doing, thanksgiving will sp sp spring out of your mouth. Those that can't thank God as those that can't think well. If you can think well, you will see reason to thank God. And you know, I found that the more you thank him, you will sustain the things he alone can do. Do you want to see God do more? Thank him for what he has done. You will sustain his hand doing more. The man that thank God will see the hand of God. I pray that today as we thank God, may you see the hand of God being released towards you. Somebody get, 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 get that amen stronger than before. If I'm talking to anybody here, may your amen sound like a trumpet. She conceived again and she bore a son and she said, Now I will praise the Lord, therefore I will call his name Judah. Can I give you one mystery? Anytime God did anything, give him thanks. After giving him thanks, name that thing. Catch it. You may not understand. Anytime God does a thing, name it. Have you wondered what made people like Abraham very great? Every encounter had a name. Jireh. Anything God has done, give it a name. She conceived. She said, I will praise God. I will give him a name, Judah. You bought a new TV when for 10 years you couldn't afford one, give it a name. Oh God, I give it God. Give it a name. Now, do you know, do you know, there are small, small things that moves God. Most of the time, you, the only thing we know is fast for 40 days. Fasting is good, but fasting is not the ultimate. Go to a dry mountain, many are fasting, but they're not on fast lane. There are other things you can deploy. Give, give, give God's doings name. When you give it name, you give it life. How many of you know that name gives life? Name, give it name. You are, you, are, you are standing on the road and suddenly something said inside of you, go back. You just go back three steps and here comes a car that failed break, pass by. You think it's by mistake? Not by accident. That voice knew that car was coming. Moved you backward three times, the car passed. Give it a name. Okaka God. And if the devil doesn't want to hear, you put it, oh kaka, oh kaka, oh kaka, eze ide bube, ahagi, jureli gwe. Just give it a name. Anytime God does anything, don't commonize it. Give it a name. Doctors gave you bad report, and suddenly, Report turned against what doctor said. They say you're going to be sick. You suddenly got recovered. You're going to die. Your womb can't carry a child. But suddenly, three places were in your womb. Give it a name and give it some praise. Hallelujah. Landlord insulted you. Insulted you. Insulted you. And in 2021, July, you're dedicating your duplex. Hey! Give it a name. Glory. Give it a name. Give it a name. They insulted your parents in the village. Insulted them so much. And suddenly, God hacking your cry. And God began to look you with, 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 with dollars and pounds talent. Began to be very rich. And suddenly, in three months, you pull down that house. Build an edifice. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. And you're now dedicating the house. And those that mocked your parents are coming to eat rice. Give them the rice. Give them wine to drink. Give them water to drink. Take them into the AC house. I 
allow Elsie to blow their head, but give it a name to God. Yes, sir. Give it a name. Matt King, what do I say? Give it a name. Give it a name. You used to squat in somebody's house and suddenly miracle happened. You now own a house of your own. Don't just pack in and be normal. Hey! Radically pack in the Holy Ghost. And when you sleep there for the night, call him a name. Give that house a name. As you give them to the things God is doing, you immortalize them. Yes, sir. You know, men can die, but their name doesn't die. So every testimony you give a name, he immortalizes. Thanksgiving can be unveiled through praise. Okay? Give him praise. Psalm 7, Psalm 7 number 70. Of my 17, sorry. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. According to his righteousness. What righteousness is there? According to his ability to be distinguished. Ability to be right at all times. Every time God performs in your, in your life, he reveals the rightness of God. He said, I will give him thanks looking at his righteousness. He shall be able to do right things in my life. He discover he alone can heal. He does the work of healing, meaning he does what is right. Because when he heals, he has done right. So you praise him. Thanksgiving simply means giving him praise with a song. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1. Bible said, and then Moses sang a song with the children of Israel. And they said, Who is like unto thee? Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horseman and his rider, he has stood into the sea. The Lord is my strength. And song. He is become my salvation he is my god and i will and i will prepare him an habitation my father my god i will exalt him the lord is a man of war the lord is his name pharaoh's chariots and his host has been cast into the sea his chosen captains also has been drowned into the red sea the lord's hand the the depth have covered them they sank into the bottom of a stone. They, thy right hand, O Lord, has become gracious in power. Thy right hand, O God, has dashed in pieces thy enemy. This is a song. This is a song. It's a song of praise, thanking God for deliverance. So sometimes when God does it, lift up your voice and begin to sing. You understand? Lift up your voice and begin to sing. I have seen him done it, done it, done it. I have seen him do it, do it, 
do it. I have seen him. Dun, 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 I have seen him. Do, 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 do it again. No, no, they, you know, sing, sing one to him. I know as I'm singing, some of you don't know what I'm saying. Sing it. Give him a song. Oluwati she for me, oh, oh, he has done it for me, for me, for me. Oluwati she for me, oh, he will do it for you. Oluwati she for me. Sing it. Sing it. Hello. Do you know that when the devil does things, we sing it. See what the devil is doing. See what the devil is doing. Devil, devil. You are complaining about it. As you are complaining, you are singing. But when God does it, you sweep it on the carpet and pretend as if he didn't do anything. Hey, change from that attitude. He gave you Maggie one cube. Sing. A packet of Maggie woke up. He showed you his finger. Sing. He will reveal his hands. He helped you in headache. Sing. He will heal your migraine. Sing. Is, don't use your voice alone for complaining. No. When you complain, you complicate your life. That voice he gave you was for him to, for you to make melody in his name. Learn to sing. And you know, one thing about God is that he's not after whether you're singing the right key. Even if you're singing key Z, God is not perturbed. In as much as you're singing to the glory of his name. Can you, will you sing? Somebody in the middle of the night. Look at it. When it looks as if you are, you are left alone, nobody is there. Papa said at midnight. At midnight. At midnight. At midnight. At midnight. Paul and Silas were in the prison house. There was nobody there. They were left alone. Beaten by the soldiers. Has a soldier beaten you before? It's different from when the police beat you. Soldiers flogged them. After flogging them, chained their hands, chained their legs. Bible said they prayed. After praying, they began to praise. They were saying, Father, we thank you because we know prison will bow. We know prison will bow. Because we saw when Peter was kept in prison in chapter 12. And you by your angel delivered Peter. If you could deliver in, uh, uh, Peter in chapter 12, in chapter 16 too, what you've done for Peter, you do here. Because you are the same yesterday, today, and even forever. Amen. As they began to praise God, Bible says, suddenly, earthquake came. Suddenly. Which means sometimes, God may not come with what looks like God. Earthquake doesn't look like God, but brother, is still God. Now, you know, when you start singing and it's as if earthquake is coming, you think maybe the trouble has increased. No, 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 no. God can come through any source. God can make it go bad more so that when it goes good, better, it will become a better testimony. God can allow it to go bad more so when it turns around, everybody will know that this is God. Can I shock you? The earthquake that began to come was helping the change because the chain was, was connected to the, to, the, to the soil. So as earthquake was coming, the chain of the chain that held them was being shaken. And suddenly, by earthquake, the chains got broken and they became free. Trouble comes in the midst of trouble. To come to the trauma, trouble, I'll give a testimony. Yes, sir. If you didn't catch what I said, don't just be looking at me like that. Hear me and hear me well. Trouble comes the second time to come to the first trouble and give you a push into your place of testimony. Yes, sir. Their hands you are bound, their legs you are bound. But hear me, earthquake came. Earthquake was another dimension of trouble. But the trouble called earthquake came to shake the foundation so that the, 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 the chain that was holding them, that was part of foundation, can be broken. What comes to kill you is actually fighting for you. Lift your voice and shout at me like a thunder. Amen. Give him praise. Yes, in that your small room, catch revelation of duplex. Start singing, start singing, start singing. In that your account that is in red, catch, catch the revelation of too much money. Start singing. In that doctor's report, catch the revelation of divine health and start singing. Your mother called you and said, Well, we don't know what to eat at Christmas. 
catch the revelation he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus the Lord is my shepherd I shall lack nothing for there is no good thing with him which from them that walk it uprightly I am an upright man because of the righteousness of God which is inside of me therefore he will not withhold it from me what I will send to my mom by 25th he will not withhold it from me you begin to sing you begin to thank as you start singing doors will begin to open somebody lift your voice and give it all a shout of praise I'll close it means to offer God give God give to God considering is done what is done give give it's called thanks with the giving so it is verbally and physically done you thank him with your mouth you give him with your hands thanksgiving and what are you giving in the place of thanks you give what reveals your heart of gratitude concerning what he has done it didn't make sense to you what you give reveals the value placed on what he has done for you. if you gave me a car this year I can't thank him and give him like you he gave bicycle if he gave me a house I can't thank him like he who got a place to squat if I was able to rent a house I can't thank him like the man who bought a house or who built a house if I build 20 houses I shouldn't thank him like the man who rented a bunch quarters thank him and give him but let the giving reflect the value of what he has done for you did it make sense Am I communicating? Thank him and give him. Look at the neighbor, tell him, thank him and give him. But you know, a lot of people don't understand this. And that's why we, we don't, we don't, we don't bring forth the revelation to its fullness. And that's why we are limited. Do you know the truth? What limits men most times are just little things. Thanking is good, but it's not complete. Because it must go, must go with giving. Thanks and giving. Now, time will film me talk about Hannah. When Hannah got to God to thank him because he gave him Samuel Bible said he took a bullock Bible said he took wine, she took wine Bible said she took bullocks she took calves, she didn't just go and say Father thank you for you've given me a son she went alongside with something the things she went with physically are the visible things that reflect the value she has over what God has done for her what has God done for you? reveal the value of it with things are you with me? Reveal it with me. You got married this year. How much did you value what God did for you? You almost died. How, how do you value it? You know, you know, you know, each time we study, God shows us new things. Okay? I think that was on Wednesday night as I was studying. God opened this to me. Do you know that yesterday I was everywhere, running around, trying to see what I can buy and give to God to reveal how much I value the things he has done for me. Are you not meant to give attention? You know, I was, I was running up and down. I wasn't comfortable. Now, I'm not, I wasn't doing it for anybody. I was doing it based because I caught a revelation. I was, I was running up and down. And you know, this is not the first time. That's where I live. I caught it many years ago. I was running up and down yesterday. He whispered in my ear. And he said, do you know I'm seeing your heart. He said, nobody knows how your heart is driving you. I will honor you more. I drove to my office. I went into my office. I knelt down. I held my table. I said, Father, thank you that I could think like that because not everybody thinks like that. People commonize this. And in the truth, this is different between those that cannot be stopped and those that can be stopped. Have you wondered why God called uh, 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 David the man after my heart? These were the things. Can I tell you the truth? There are small, small things you do that count. Small, small things. What's supposed to be thinking? He's been a fast for 50 days. He, he, people are fasting for 50 days, but it, it's a hard thing. Can I tell you? Everything that must move God must move your heart. If you're in here today to thank God and your heart is not moved, go back home. If it doesn't move your heart, it will move God. 
Bible says the heartfelt prayer makes tremendous power valuable. It's what moves your heart that will move God into your world. So, giving is a movement of the heart revealing the value placed on what God has done for you. Well, has God done anything? Value. If I has God done anything? Value. Bright has God done anything? Value. 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 Can I ask you this question? How many of you know, maybe any of your sister or uncle or auntie that somehow, you know, came out of school and couldn't get a job? Maybe after five years, was able to get a job. And how did she or he got the job? Somebody, an uncle, came to the village and said, you are still here? Wow, no, 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 no. Give me your CV. She submitted the CV. Say, okay, um, by next month, on the 10th day, come over to my house. She left your village to Accra. Okay? And in the next three months, your uncle gave her a job. She got a work after five years. No, usually, what do you think the person does when he or she is paid first? You're quiet? Where I'm coming from, she will, he, he or she will buy something for salary. After she must have paid her tithe, or she might decide, okay, um, my life starts after now. This one is to satisfy the source. Some will carry it like that. Those that are wise will carry it like that and go to him and say, Sir, thank you so much. Um, if not you, I will not be. I came to appreciate you. It's not left for him to say, Oh, no, 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 no. I did it for you. No, take it. If he wants to take it, willingly give it. Do you know why? The source that gave you a job can sustain the job. But some people are not wise. When that happened, they raise their shoulders. If they don't see their uncle, if they thought they would look into his, his eye and talk back. After all, I've got a job. I no longer need you. When they have issues, they want to go back to him. He'll close his doors. They will lose the job. Somebody be wise. Don't always take for granted the doings of God. It may be little. Don't commonize it. It may not make sense. Don't commonize it. Can I tell you the truth? Whatever you have today, somebody is praying to have it. You have a man in your life as a husband. Somebody is dying, praying every day. How I wish, how I wish, how I wish, how I wish, how I wish I can have somebody whose name I bear. You know, there are men who cannot marry. You have a child. Somebody is crying every time. How I wish I can have one. You have a, a, you know, I've seen someone who has only boys. The cry every day was, can I have a girl? Can I have a girl? Can I have a girl? And I've seen also those who ask, girls, can I have a boy? Well, you have girl, you have boy. You have only girls, you have only boys. Somebody give thanks. You have your wife, your wife still loves you. Some people's wife has hated them, still bearing their name but loving another person. Some people's husband is now a stranger in his own home. You are still together with your husband, with your wife. Somebody. Find reason to thank God. And when you thank him, thank and give him. Let your giving reveal how much your value what God has done. Are you with me? Write down these few things. I'll close with it. I'll leave the rest. Father, thank you. How should you thank? Thank him with your heart. Number two, thank him with a gift. Number three, thank him with a cheerful heart. A merry heart. What are the blessings in thanksgiving? Number one, it turns open the gates of God. It turns open the gates of God. It turns open the gates of God. When the gates of God is open, you know the gates of hell will be shut. So the easiest way to shut the gates of heaven, uh, to shut the gates of hell, is by turning open the gate of God. And how do you turn, open the gate of God? Through thanksgiving. If the gate of hell has sponsored lack, and the gate of God opens, will lack end? So every time the gate of heaven opens for you, it closes the gates of hell. And how do you sponsor the opening of the gates of God? Thanksgiving. 
thanksgiving. Psalm 100 and verse 4. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Number three and number two, it releases the anointing for multiplication. Write it down, it will help you one day. It releases the anointing for multiplication. If you want whatsoever God has done for you to multiply, switch into thanksgiving. When we thank him, his power multiplies. John chapter 6 and verse 11, Bible said, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and disciples, and the disciples unto them. And they sat down, and likewise the fish, and likewise the fish, as much as they would. The, when, the, when they were full, he said unto them, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost, that in. Therefore they gathered together and filled twelve baskets with a fragment of five belly loaves with, which remained above that which was eaten. Two fishes and five loaves. Thanksgiving multiplied it into twelve baskets. Jesus took it and gave thanks multiplication happen if you want whatsoever you have today to multiply a year from today give thanks you know what i do every year i thank him special this one is special thanksgiving i live in thanksgiving at all times but on a special day like this i will thank him and i will put my vision upon a year from today i woke up this morning asking myself how far have i gone i remembered i changed the house this year god changed my car this year I remember so many things God did for me. As you're thanking God now, cast your mind on a year from today. Set some agenda in place. Set, set, set your eyes on the future. A year from today, as I thank Him now, I will multiply into marriage. So you are single now. Thank Him prophetically. You are married a year from today my baby will be in my house as I thank him now I dread to church today but I'll drive to church a year from today don't thank him and not expect multiplication is there any area you want to multiply as you are thanking him put that area in your consciousness finally thanksgiving commands of resurrection as you thank him no matter what has died it will come back alive no matter what has died kidney is dead thanksgiving can restore liver is dead thanksgiving can restore heart is backed up thanksgiving can restore there is nothing that thanksgiving cannot restore john 11 and verse 14 bible said then jesus said unto them lazarus is dead in verse 41 then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you. But that was hard me. Now, that word, I thank you. Lazarus came back alive and went back home. When things are dead, Thanksgiving releases the power that can restore back to life and cancel death. Is there any area you want life to swim back? Give him thanks in that area. When you are thanking, you are not fooling. When you are thanking, you are releasing heaven's intelligence. Heaven's intelligence. Heaven's intelligence. When you are releasing, when you, when you are thanking, you are, you are deploying heaven's wisdom. Those that are not wise can't thank. They only complain. Thank him. Whatever that is dead comes back alive. You know there are two kinds of people. Those who complain about what is dead. And those who are thanking God for his ability that can restore what is dead back to life. I don't know which one you belong to. Those who are blaming God and are angry that things are not working. And those who are thanking God who can make what is not working to work. These are people that will have a better future. I want to encourage you. I want to sustain the height God has taken you to. Dwell in thanksgiving. Thank him and keep on thanking him. Multiplication will come. Life will bounce back to the place of death. I pray for somebody today. The grace to thank God receive. Oh, that amen is not too good. I said the grace to thank God receive. I said the grace to thank God receive. Lift your hand and just give him thanks, everybody.